Thanks for joining us for this weather web extra. We did want to show you the video that we had into this storm. This was actually during it sent in from a viewer Tyler Berry out there in Boardman. You can see the wind blowing the trees around. This is what that happened in Boardman. That microburst, not a tornado that we saw. We actually also have some video in in just after the storm right around 4 35 o'clock we also had some people out there shooting this now you can see it toppled trees down also caused some damage some are even on power lines there are reports of power outages throughout the area that will remain on top here in the weather center also buildings got damaged we have this one coming in from the firestone right around 224 in boardman now you can see parts of the roof did get peeled off and now laying in the parking lot so this storm did cause a lot of damage today but we do want to emphasize it was not a tornado now we're going to show you exactly what's happening here at the weather wall. Thanks for joining us for this weather web extra. I'm meteorologist Matt Jones, and I want to kind of take it step by step to show you exactly what it was and why we think that way. So I'm going to take a step back. This is our sky cam in uh, Young, Youngstown and what we're seeing down off. It's uh, facing southward. Now we do want to play the loop here. If you look at the time, it's right around 345. Now watch as this storm starts to come in. You can see it very faintly in this photo in this picture. You can see the rain shaft starting to make its way through Boardman. But if we play it one more time after that, you can definitely see it. The heavy rain. Now this is why we think it's a microburst. Now rain typically falls out of the storm. A microburst is when literally the bottom of the storm opens up and everything dumps on that specific area. So Boardman, it just happened to have your number called up and you were in the crosshairs this afternoon. You can also see, look at the rain as it starts to fall. Instead of going directly towards the surface, it's also pushed out. So you can kind of see that kind of that curve that that edge of that storm has. That's that high winds begin to push away from the storm and also another indication of a microburst. And as it quickly as it came, well, it's being pushed out of the area. And just in the next probably 10 minutes or so, I'll take a step back and you can see in the timestamp, it just took literally 20 minutes for the storm to go through and then another storm right behind it. But from what we're seeing right now, those storms have cleared. We are tracking some other storms heading towards the valley and also some storms for Monday. But you want to show you some pictures that were sent in and take our time. This was sent in, as you can see, whiteout conditions. And typically we talk about that with snow, but this is, was caused by rain. We're not seeing anything besides these few cars, just maybe a couple feet in front of this person who took this photo. And this is the, the whiteout conditions or you really can't see in the road. Typically, if you were driving through it, you'd have to pull your car over it and hope for the best. Now, these conditions during a microburst are just as severe as a tornado. So even though we say, it wasn't a tornado. The effects of it, well, still the same. Now, the difference between tornado damage and a microburst damage is right here. These trees. Now, these trees are all laying down the same way. So, typically during a tornado, if you have all the trees, they'd be falling each way on top of each other over power lines on houses. But if you notice, there's a streamlined pattern to this. Every single one falling in the same direction. That means instead of having circular winds that you have with a tornado, it all goes in one direction. And those straight line winds still could be as strong as a tornado, but not happening in the valley today. Now, we do want to show you some other photos. These continue to come into this uh, weather center, and we appreciate everybody for sending them in. This was a picture of a tree down on power lines. Also, we're seeing multiple pictures of tree downs. This is going all the way from 224 um, up just to the northeast, probably around five to ten miles of damage in Boardman today is what we're seeing. Also, we're looking at these trailers in the Home Depot parking lot, really toppled over, thrown around like matchbox cars, and that's those high winds all thrown in one direction off into the northeast. Now, there is some damage. We showed you the Firestone earlier. Also, this fence got taken out, unfortunately, and that's the damage. We're also seeing a report of someone's car that was had a tree fall on them. We'll have the latest details of that coming up a little bit later today, but what are we looking at right now? Well, this is the loop of radar over the last couple of hours, we're seeing again some showers start to push into the valley, but nothing like we saw earlier. Doesn't mean we're out of the clear for tonight. We're still tracking some heavier showers off to the west of us. If you look throughout most of the state of Ohio, there is reports of severe thunderstorm warnings in Toledo, and that will continue to make its way across Ohio. Now, if you're watching this video and it's six, seven, eight, nine o'clock in the afternoon for Sunday afternoon, what we're seeing is those storms are going to continue to move towards the Cleveland area. We're going to keep a very close eye on this. It could even hit Trumbull County, but whether it keeps its strength remains to be seen at this point. So we'll keep a very close eye on that, see if we don't get any more severe weather into the valley as this approaches. But this is a bigger system that we're talking about. Look at this all the way in Wichita. This is where the center of this storm is. So we're going all the way from Kansas 
to the valley. That's how far reaching it is. Even we're seeing rain all the way near Toronto. This is a massive system. And I'm going to step back again. Look in Kansas. That snow that they're seeing. Some areas getting over a foot of snow here in the last 24 hours. Now, this rain continues to push in. So, not only are we going to see storms for the next 24 hours, but we could see a lot of rain even heading into Tuesday and unfortunately for the rest of the week. But we'll play all of that in a future tracker for you. Temperatures tonight still going to remain warm. We're seeing upper 70s for tonight until we drop and when that sun sets, but not by much. We are tracking some showers and storms. This one, this particular model of Future Tracker does have a storm coming in around 4:30, but these are going to be isolated. So the exact timing of when these are going to happen are hard to predict. But do expect a light shower or a storm for your morning commute. These will continue, but temperatures not dropping by much. We're still seeing into the upper 60s, low 70s for our low. Come tomorrow morning, but this is what we're tracking very closely. We talked about those showers and storms. This is when the bulk of it's going to happen. Now we're expecting it to start pushing it somewhere around lunchtime. This could be somewhere around 11, 12 o'clock, and they will continue as we go through the early afternoon. So again, if you're going to be out the door tomorrow, anywhere from Monday late morning to early afternoon, even as we get ahead, head into the evening hours. You need to become weather aware and make sure you stay focused on exactly what the weather is doing. Make sure you have your Storm Team 27 weather app and you know exactly where those storms are and where they're headed. We don't want any more repeats of what's going to happen today, what's going to happen tomorrow. So if you're going to be out and about, make sure you stay safe and stay aware. Now we are seeing those storms begin to push out of the valley come Monday night into Tuesday, but we are tracking those isolated showers come Tuesday, even into Wednesday. Before we get there, though, we're looking at tonight's low right around 65, relatively warm for what we've seen in the last couple nights. We are seeing cloudy conditions, and that chance of thunderstorms do linger. Now, these are going to be isolated. Like today, we just saw one strong to severe storm push through. That could be the same for later on tonight. We'll keep you posted as that continues. But tomorrow, high right around 75 degrees. Those thunderstorms are likely with some of them being strong. So, the severe weather threat, we talked about it yesterday, is going to be for Monday. Even though we saw that microburst today, well, we could see even more of that and wind damage come tomorrow. That's a potential. Not going to exactly say when it's where, where, when and where it's going to hit, but something that you need to keep a very close eye on tomorrow. Now, for your seven-day forecast, this is the latest one that we just updated here in the Weather Center. Monday, that's really going to be that rainmaker. Tuesday, we were talking about those lingering showers, but look at that colder temperatures as they come through the area. And then as we get into Thursday, those thunderstorms back into the forecast. Wednesday, you are going to see a little bit of sunshine, partly sunny skies, but those clouds are going to start to creep in later on into the afternoon. But look at that for Wednesday night, highs into the low excuse me, hot lows into the upper 30s. And then as we go throughout the week, we are seeing cooler temperatures and that rain chance continues as we unfortunately head into the weekend. But all the latest information will be on our website at WKBN.com. But also as we head into the week, again, make sure you stay aware of what's happening weather-wise and we'll keep you update right here on WKBN.com.